Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 6. Today we're going to be looking at our first kind of insight into the shows. We've got a bit of footage, and it reveals some dialogue in terms of maybe what we can expect in one of the episodes this season. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So after this video or before, it's up to you guys, go check out the link in the description below to the audition link, which was released about a month ago. I was just made aware of it, and this is for Supergirl Season 6, so some people have been auditioning for the new season. Obviously, we've only had one casting coming out of the new season. That was Nick the other day, the Russian-Canadian who got cast in a minor role. We don't know what it is right now, but he's the only casting as of yet for Supergirl, on Legends, and lots of the other shows there's been lots of castings, but Supergirl is kind of still in the phase where there is not much info about the new season. And this is kind of our first insight into the season I would say, because it is footage and it is from an actual screenplay that they've written for the new season. So yeah, very interesting, go check it out, we're going to be talking about this in today's video. Tomorrow we've got another clip that I need to talk about. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, so be on the lookout for that. It's very, very interesting as well. We maybe have a major character talking to one of these new characters. And so the first character we're going to talk about in this video is Rosemary. So that's all we know about her. She's called Rosemary. And what we can infer about her is what she says in her dialogue in this audition tape. And so I'm guessing they don't want us to put out the audition tape, you know, on a video or something like that. So respectfully, I'm going to put it in the description below. It's for Ashley Tavares. I think that's how you say her name. She was auditioning for the role. I think she did a pretty good job. And yeah, so we're going to break this down. And so at the start of the script, what they go over, and I've just wrote down some important lines that I think may give away something to do with the character, because here we're mainly talking about what potential character could she be, who is this Rosemary person in Supergirl Season 6. So she says to this person, this person's called Chuck, that's all we know, we only know their first names, and she says to him, you summoned me here. And then she goes on to say, I have suffered in ways your senses can't fathom, in many words. And then she says, and you, you had the chance at a home, a family, but you gambled it all away, didn't you, Chuck? And then in response to this, Chuck is like, do I know you? And so this is very interesting, and I think maybe there is some sort of memory loss here, or some sort of way that these two characters did meet before, say, on another planet, because it seems like she's from another planet from all of the dialogue, and he probably doesn't remember her, or number two, she's going nuts, and assumes Chuck is someone else, maybe. So that's interesting, and basically she says, you summoned me here, essentially from that you can kind of be like, oh, she didn't just get like a text to come here, but it was like, you summoned me, she got like sent through a portal, or something happened, right? She got summoned here. And because she's talking about magic, I was like, yeah, so what is going on here? Maybe something has caused her to be literally summoned. And so she goes on to say, I can help you get it all back. See, I used to be special. I used to be able to summon blankets anytime I wanted, but now I'm totally blanketless. And when you watch this, you're like, what the hell are they talking about? And then she goes on to say, oh, for Zook's sake, blankets are a metaphor for magic. I used to have magic, and now it's gone. So, what the hell is she talking about here? And I don't get this whole blankets thing, honestly. I think that's a bit corny, and I think there is no metaphor there. I think that they were just trying to come up with something. And again, these scripts aren't final, necessarily. They do make tweaks, obviously, on the day, and I hope they get rid of that whatever it is, because I don't know what the hell blankets and magic have in common. But anyway, let's move on from that. So, she mentioned something. She said, oh, for Zook's sake. So now, what is a Zook? Because that is something very specific that they've written into the screenplay, and it's obviously got some sort of relevance, so I looked it up, and I'm sure maybe you guys looked it up when you watched it. So, a Zook is a pet that Martian Manhunter had in the comics. So it's interesting because it does relate to what we have on Supergirl. Obviously we have Jean, we have Martian Manhunter, so they like to do references back to the comics with comics that are very similar or runs that relate back to what's going on in the show. 
Also, Zooks are a race of imps, which is in relation to Mr. Mix's Spitalik. So maybe this has some sort of relation to him, because we know he's returning at some point this season. So that's an interesting point to know. And so what is a Zook? They're a race of small creatures from another dimension, and so Martian Manhunter ends up having one of them as a pet, because a scientist had a Zook in the comics. I think the name Zook is a bit funny, and they look funny. Nevertheless, it did happen in the comics, Zook is a real thing, and yeah, so they're basically just referred to as Zook, and this character in the comics is referred to as Zook, he has no name, and essentially, yeah, he's just a character, he's an imp, and he has the power of metamorphosis, power replication, and size alteration, so that's interesting. This basically confirms that Zooks exists out there in the multiverse. Even if we don't see a Zook in the show, it's a reference. They like to do that. We've referenced Warworld before. We haven't seen that yet, but that's a reference. And we've referenced Green Lanterns. We've referenced lots of different things that haven't showed up. And that's a thing that the shows really, really like to do. So that's an interesting note. Maybe we'll see one of these Zooks sometime in the future. And it's really interesting that it actually links back to Martian Manhunter. Okay, so what was she talking about in her dialogue? So yeah, she talks about her losing her powers. Obviously, she is a power-wielding magic user. What you can see in the audition. And she is looking for her powers to come back. She's been summoned and she thinks this Chuck guy is able to give her powers back. So basically she reveals she's looking for a friend, a comrade in arms to help her get her magic back. I presume this is in the present day and who could this Rosemary be? Well, there is a few options I think. One person pointed out that this could be Zatanna because of the magic and you know the fact that she's not fully bad but also is kind of bad but then she has some maybe redeemable qualities that could be actually brought back so she's kind of like an anti-hero and becomes like a hero so it could be Zatanna maybe that might happen but I don't know how likely that is because Zatanna is a big character and obviously they use her in Young Justice and stuff like that I would love to see Zatanna on the show because she's one of my favorite DC characters. I love the character, but it doesn't really seem like Zatanna. I don't think Zatanna has ever gone that dark before, and the fact that she's threatening this person later, which we'll get to in a minute, it just doesn't seem exactly like her. So I think it's more likely that this Rosemary is going to be a villain of the week, who is just going to be cast with a Vancouver local, because I think these people were just locals and that's why they are doing these castings because everyone else from America I don't think they're gonna be able to bring back in and or bring in for the first time if they are not one of the main cast members because they have to quarantine and I don't know if it's worth it for them to stick around for like a few days shoot in Vancouver but have to do a two-week quarantine there and two-week quarantine back so yeah I'm presuming these are all locals so I think it's more likely to be a villain of the week and it looks like this Rosemary is looking for a sidekick, that being Chuck, someone to help her out to get her powers back. And she says she will give him his heart's greatest desire, literally. So when she gets her powers back, it seems like she's a very powerful user and she's able to basically get whatever she wants or whatever anyone wants and basically a lot of manipulation in some way because it seems like it's with villainous intent. And so then we cut to the next clip and this is from either the same episode which is most likely or from a later episode but I'm going to stick with the theory that this is all one episode just two different points in the episode in the screenplay and in the script. And so the person opposing her is actually called Maxwell. For a minute I was like is this Maxwell Lord returning and I was like no this doesn't sound like him because this person this Maxwell had powers before. So this is interesting, is this at the start of the episode, or is this towards the end? I would say it's more likely to be towards the end of the episode due to some of the dialogue. As it seems like we've seen Maxwell before, so I presume there's going to be a bit of setup with that towards the start of the episode. And so Maxwell says, please Rosary, don't do this. Then she replies, the old Maxwell would have been cheering for me to blow this place to bits. So she's in a building or something like that, she's threatening to do something which is blow this place to bits, I guess. And so she says, the electricity in your fingertips, the wild soaring sensation of limitless power, what happened to you? So from this, 
we can tell that he used to have powers as well, just like her. They were sort of like a team. So I don't know where the Chuck character fits into this. Is he the same character but just written with a different name? I'm not sure. Is one in the past? Is one in the future? We'll have to see. But it seems like they were definitely some sort of teammates or some sort of sidekicks to each other at one point. And he definitely had powers, but he chose to not do that. He said, honestly, I discovered friendship and it was much stronger than any power I had known. So yeah, Maxwell had powers in the past and then he moved on from it, it seems. Obviously, the line is a bit corny, you know, honestly, I discovered friendship and I think they acknowledge that in what they're saying in the dialogue. But yeah, he's moved on past it and Rosemary is not and he is, in fact, blocking Rosemary's way and Rosemary says, just as the audition ends, now it's time, you learned. Essentially, she's threatening him, she's going to do something, she's going to attack him, presumably with her powers it seems like at this point in the episode she has got her powers back because she talks about the electricity in her fingertips and it seems like you know she can actually destroy this place to bits as she mentioned earlier in the audition so it seems like maybe this chuck has actually helped rosemary get her powers back and that's what happens and it leads to this moment where we see this maxwell character again and Maxwell tries to stop her. And so from what the dialogue also says, it seems like she's had a traumatic past, traumatic experiences. And apparently, according to her, it was Maxwell's friends, she says, that destroyed the people she loved. She is now all hate. And so whoever this Maxwell guy is, he has caused her some trauma in the past and she's using that to fuel her anger right now or it fuels her anger and therefore she's going to probably kill him right at this moment. Okay, so from what we can tell from this audition, it seems like this Rosemary character, who is most likely going to be a villain, she definitely has villainous intent, she seems very much so like a villain of the week, they always have some sort of backstory to them, they have people who maybe relate to them, and they have people who aid them, or people from their past. That is a common thing in the villains of the week and it seems like she ticks all the boxes for being one of those characters. And it's a little bit strange that in these two scenes, obviously they probably didn't want the actors to actually act alongside of it because they probably weren't available because they're very busy. But in these scenes, there is no Supergirl, there is no other characters that we know. It's two characters that we have never met before. Obviously, this is some sort of big moment, but I guess Supergirl will sweep in to save the day as she's about to destroy this building or attack this guy but maybe this amps up the stakes with him therefore maybe getting attacked by her so yeah very interesting stuff and i can't wait to talk about the other audition tomorrow because this does include one of our main characters i'm pretty sure so make sure to not miss that turn on notifications and subscribe so you don't miss that also i'll let you know when i'm going to post that tomorrow either via the community tab Twitter or Instagram at the DC TV show the same as the channel so thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed it this has been a very fun video to make because there is a lot to talk about and a lot to theorize about but it's also our first official insight and look into Supergirl season 6 with some actual dialogue and some references that we can talk about so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red. Oh,